Good morning, everyone. First Assembly of God, Hannibal, and everybody in the, that's out there listening this morning. Um, beautiful Sunday morning today, and um, I'd like to turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 20 through 25. Very familiar verse, <clears throat> and I'm entitling my message this morning, Finishers. Finishers. Have you ever seen an unseen project or an unfinished project that never got completed? For various reasons, they ran out of money, they didn't have a permit, um, they lost interest, but they just didn't get it complete. And a lot of times we ask ourselves questions, why didn't they finish painting that car? Why didn't they finish building that house? Why didn't they finish paving the road? Well, for whatever reason, people don't finish their projects or maybe they were delayed. Another example is a race. And Paul writes this in the book of Hebrews, or the Hebrew writer. Some people think it's Paul. Some people think it's other people. But regardless of the author of Hebrews in the, in the New Testament, <clears throat> a normal race is with winners and losers. You have first, second, third, you know, chronological order of winners and losers and, and those who are winning in, in certain specific spots. Some placed even further on than that. But there are some who simply just drop out and they don't finish the race for various reasons. They got dehydrated, they got a muscle cramp. Some of them can't finish physically, but a spiritual race is a little bit different <clears throat> because spiritual race, we're all called to finish, not coming first. Marathons are long and they have uphill and downhill moments, just like in life. And uphills are painful and they're very hard. They require a lot of pacemaking and a lot of concentration. Whereas at the same direction in our Christian walk, we're gonna have uphill battles, we're gonna have hardships, and this is when we have to pace ourselves and stay completely focused on our walk with God. It's not about being first, it's not about anything but being a finisher. You're pacing yourself in a marathon, you set the speed for the endurance, you're conditioning yourself so that you can finish the race and then later on you can see how quickly you can finish but the main thing is to finish but what drives a finisher to finish the finish line what drives a person to go across that last part what sees them or what 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 they see excuse me is the fact that they see the end results they know that whenever they get past that finish line that they are going to be able to have the pain stop they're going to be able to know that it's over and they completed something and have purpose in their life. That's why a lot of people do these races is because they want to accomplish something. Our reward as a Christian believer in Jesus Christ is heaven. It's the rewards that we're going to get, the house and mansion that we're going to receive, the pain-free and eternal life that we're going to have, as well as a perfect body and a new name. So with all that said, let me read to you Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 25 this morning <clears throat> beginning in verse 23 and it says this let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more you see the day approaching. Basically, this is saying, as we see the day coming of Jesus Christ coming nearer, that we should not give up meeting together and encouraging one another to continue to live as Christians should live. The word hold in this scripture simply means to lay hold or fasten and to not let go of your faith. Today, more than ever before, we see people not fastening themselves to their faith. They basically jump on board and they jump off board. They, they don't know how or they don't know what is going on. They simply know they are a part of something and they're no longer a part of something. And it's as, they change their faith about as quickly as they change their boxer shorts or their, their trousers or their clothes. And really, it needs to be something a little bit more deeper than that. So what are you talking about, Pastor? Point number one in my message this morning is this. Nobody remembers how you start, but everybody remembers how you finish. What does that mean? It means 
People are going to remember how you started for a brief moment when you first get saved as a child or maybe even as an adult. But at your funeral, people are going to talk about the life you lived and what kind of a life you lived and what did you do with your life. And people are always going to try to say nice things, but at the same time, they're going to remember how you finished your walk with God. Did you make an impression on them or did you simply do it at your own leisure or casually did what you could or maybe impacted a person here or there? It's not about how much you impacted. It's did you live the life for others to see? That's what's important. So you simply don't quit. You simply finish the race. And that's what Christianity is all about. Serving the Lord is a race. Only the finishers get the rewards. God does not give rewards for just simply participating. He rewards those who finish the entire course. And that is the course of life, our our life itself. So why do so many people quit? Why do so many people just don't even get started or slow down or fade out from living the life of a born-again believer? Why do people do that? We see them start strong, come to church, get excited about the Lord, and then over time they'll miss a Sunday or two and then a month and eventually they'll fade right out of the picture. And a lot of this is life gets busy. Life gets distracting, and uh, our careers and our lives and our families. And something we have to pay close attention to is that just in 20 or 30 short years, your children will be raised and out of your home. Then you'll be a grandparent. Then those grandchildren will be raised in another 15 to 20 years, and they'll be all raised up, and 50 years goes by, and then all of a sudden you're old and, and you are retired, and you're thinking to yourself, what now? What next? You know, I have people that age in my church, and I'm speaking to some of you right now, and what I see some of them doing is they're participating in church. They're engaged, they're teaching, they're playing instruments, they're singing, they're involved, and they don't, they don't allow their age to hold them back. And I admire these people because they're serving the Lord to the very end. And some do get physically unable to do those things, and that's when they do step down, and that's when others need to step up. So as others step up, we can look where verse 23 and 24 of Hebrews chapter 10 can be brought to our remembrance. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. There's two points in that one line right there. And these two points are this. God is faithful no matter what. How many times has the Lord healed you, touched you, blessed you, and came through for you and aided you in your time of need? Amen? Another time is if your answer many times is, then you know that He is faithful, are you willing to be faithful to Him? God has been faithful to Israel for thousands of years and He is still faithful to them. He'll still be faithful to you. Over thousands of years He made a promise to them and He still fulfills that promise. Israel is in, is in existence today because God fulfills and comes through. Since Israel has been a nation in the 40s, no one can remove them or defeat them and never will. When God promises something, He always delivers. Always. This is something you have to remember, and it may not be in your timetable, but God has your life on His timetable. Always. This is how people start off in things they never finish. Because they don't realize just how real God is. They're all excited about the idea and the, f- and, and the flair of getting involved when the work begins and the starters begin to fade out over time because the finishers themselves, people who are finishers, not starters, keep running. But the ones that fade out stop running because they get distracted. They lose interest. They get a side ache. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, in other words, life comes in and distracts them and gets hard. And they quit running. They quit coming to church. They quit participating. They quit plugging in. And then before long, they're Christian in name only and they're no longer engaged in the Word of God and with others in the church. They're merely an acquaintance and before long they just become a distant relative that they see every once in a while so this is something that we have to watch out for as Christians 
What drives them and what keeps them going, the ones that finish? People will not remember how you start, but they will always remember how you finish. What's the big deal about that, Pastor? So I don't care what other people think. You will care about what Christ thinks, because he's the one that's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he's the one that's going to remember how you finish. He wants you to finish. He wants to help you to finish, not just because to get rewards, but he wants you to f- to experience the full eternal life and all the benefits that heaven has got to offer. It's not just going to be a place you're going to be floating around and, and playing a harp. You're going to be living like we do here on earth. You're going to be walking on streets of gold. You're going to be having mansions that don't need repair. You're going to be eating at the supper table with all of the patriarchs of the Old Testament. You're going to be having the time of your life, and you're not going to feel any pain. You're not going to get tired. You're not going to even have time to think about all the sorrows, because there won't be. This is going to be the perfect place and the perfect life. This is our hope as born-again believers. So my second point this morning excuse me, is this. The reality of this race, our Christian walk, is not everyone is going to finish. Unfortunately, not everybody is going to finish this race. I'm going to do my part as a born-again believer, a father, a husband, and a pastor to finish the race and take as many with me as I can. But I can't run your race for you. Only you can run your race. You have to be in shape to be able to run a race. How do you stay in shape? You got to read your word. You got to apply it to your life. Talk about it with others. Pray to the Lord. Ask forgiveness and move on and live life. And before long, it'll become a habit. And before long, it'll become a part of your life and a lifestyle, just like anything else. God wants everyone to be finishers, but He cannot run the race for you. He'll show you the way, He'll show you how. He'll even equip you, but you are the only one that can determine if you want to finish or not. Just like the church of Galatia where the scriptures read, and I want to read this to you right now. In Galatians 5, 7, it says this. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Many people today want to be Christians or want to be a part of the Christianity or or the Christian church, excuse me. And they quit obeying the truth because Jesus said these two important commands. Obey, obey. They were asking him, I got a little bit tongue-tied there. They asked him a question, the disciples, and said, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Basically being passionate about God and obeying all his commands. And love others as you would yourself. That's it. And when someone is in love with God, they're going to try to please Him. And they're going to ask people to forgive them. And we're going to have moments of weakness. But we're also going to have moments of forgiveness, repentance, and love with God. And that's what's going to keep us to be able to have the reality of the race in front of us. Are you still running? Or are you thinking about stopping and quitting on the sideline? Let me go further. Who cut in on you? In other words, that's what the scripture says. Who cut in on you? Who, who, who got in your way? Did life get in your way? Did people get in your way? Is the entertainment wrong? No. Is having a good time wrong? Absolutely not. But if we live a life where we're working and vacationing and buying things and doing things, and that's all there is, we can easily squeeze God out and something else cuts right in. And that's where we need to make God a priority in our lives. Everyone starts off excited, as I said. But very few will finish because they get weary and they get exhausted and they simply go home and go to bed and watch a little TV and start the next day. Start your day with God. Make Him a priority in your life and you will find that your life will be much happier. You will find that you have purpose and hope that will come alive that God planted deep in your heart. And So these are things that we need to be thinking about because when you run a race, your focus is on pacing yourself so you can finish. A lot of people will quit the race or their walk with God because of many, many reasons. The church is not spiritual enough. The pastor is not preaching good enough. The worship team isn't singing enough. I got hurt in church. Others are always complaining. The list goes on and on. But people, just like people who run a real marathon, they'll get muscle aches. They'll get thirsty. They'll have cramps. They'll have a desire in their heart and in their mind to stop. 
but something drives them forward, and that is determination. I'm determined to serve the Lord. I'm determined to finish this race. I'm determined to be a finisher and not a quitter. And a lot of people don't want to put determination in their life because it requires a little discipline. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be determined to finish. Jesus will forgive you. He'll help you. He'll mend your ways. He'll heal your heart. And He'll help you to finish the course. That's why God wants us to be together in church. <clears throat> because when we're together in church, someone will say something to another. A song will be sung. A verse will be read. A sermon will be preached. Someone will get a handshake or a hug. Now, I know COVID-19, we're not supposed to do that, and we won't. But I'm saying when this passes, we can all join together again, shake hands and sing and laugh. And a lot of times, some of you will say things to me and encourage me that will keep me wanting to write that next sermon and to say that prayer and to visit that person in the hospital. That's what Christianity is all about, encouraging one another. In the home groups, we got to keep those going because home groups is the most important thing that we could do to keep our fellowship alive and to encourage one another. So as the dis discipline goes, discipline means I am going to stray towards what I want and what God wants. I'm going to move forward regardless of what happens in my life. Desire is, do I really desire to have eternity with God or do I hope I will make it when life ends? Now, I don't know about you, but determination is what's going to get you to the finish line. Telling yourself, I will serve the Lord even when it seems like you can't and reminding yourself of the rewards when you forget that they're there. Talk to yourself about it and talk about the consequences. So it's not just determination. It's trusting God when you don't even feel like anything is there. That's what we call faith. Hope is a substance of things hoped for. Faith, excuse me, re rephrase that. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. That's what it's all about. And things that we do not see. Our faith is based upon what we don't see, but what we hope for. Because we know that God is real in here as well as above us and all around us. He lives within our heart. Jesus Christ is alive and well, and our faith is going to carry us across that finish line. So don't think you have to do it just by determination or by raw human will. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God is going to help you across that finish line in your spiritual walk with God, if you'll submit to Him. That's all you have to do, and pray and ask Him for your help. So it brings me to my third point, this morning and that is the reason some people quit is because life gets hard or they get distracted or they never want to get started in the first place but bottom line is life gets hard they get discouraged they have failures disappointments delays other depressing things maybe they've lost a job during COVID-19 maybe somebody they know has the virus Maybe they lost out on their marriage or their best friend died. Something happened. Car breaks down six or seven times during the week. Boss is jumping all over their case and they're getting discouraged. Jesus said life wouldn't be easy and that he would never leave us or forsake us. And when everybody else is falling away and quitting and fading out, just know this, that when you stay the course and you remain faithful in your servanthood to the Lord, Remain in the race that God will do his part. Because again, he said he would never leave us or forsake us. So are you loving the quitters or are you looking down on them with disdain? I want to remind you of that. Are you loving the quit the quitters or are you looking down on them with disdain? Because we are called to love those and you who are spiritual restore such a one. The book of Galatians tells us that. So when we see someone straying, we're to continue to invite them and to bring them in and to continue to connect with them in all ways possible so that nothing can distract us and so that we can bring them back into the fold or bring them back into the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of what they've done, what they've said, or what they felt like, they are human too. And it is our job as Christians to be able to encourage them to serve the Lord. My goal is to finish strong if it's the last thing I do. Many of us will say that, but understand this, that life is temporal. So <clears throat> many times when I myself get tired and feeling alone and no one cares or I'm too busy and no one understands a pastor's life, 
My walk is not based on what other people think. My walk is not based upon what other people care about or if they care about me or not. My walk is based on my personal, passionate, interwoven, connected, real relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't put it any more plain than that. So many people fall short of coming to know Christ personally. And that's the only thing that's going to make you closer to Him, finish the race, and to be able to have the ability to feel forgiveness and accept it and extend it towards others. That's what it's all about, folks, is feeling and living and breathing the presence of God. So Galatians 6, 9 says this, Let us do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. There's many times that we'll get tired in life and we'll feel worn out and we're helping people, coaching people, praying for people, and we'll feel like, when does this all end? When is this person ever going to change? I have to believe that it's true, that if it's in God's Word, it means that failure may visit us, but it's not an option to remain there. You may fail, you may fall short, or you may get tired and be tempted to fade off. Get around someone who will encourage you. Get into the Word of God or let the Word of God be preached to you. There's so much multimedia out there, including this. There's so many other things that will help you and encourage you. Television shows, Christian shows, pastors preaching all over Facebook. I mean, it's endless. If you'll get the Word of God, the Word of God will get a hold of you. That's all there is to it. Pray. Ask for someone to help you. Ask for someone to pray for you and receive it because that's the only thing that's going to carry you through. Last point. Is your faith is what will distinguish you from a finisher or a quitter. I'm going to say that again. Your faith is what will distinguish you as from a finisher or a quitter. Faith gets challenged with questions like, is it really worth it? People who are on the journey with God, that's what faith is all about. God's on a journey with you. And he's never going to leave you or forsake you. I'm going to keep saying that because he states this in the Word of God more than once. Finishers stay in God's presence even when there is no church service or worship team to perform for them. Now, it's funny. I wrote this little statement right there a couple years back. Never thought we'd ever be using it in COVID-19 or coronavirus. We don't have a worship service right now. We don't have a church service right now. Finishers are going to finish regardless. If there's no Facebook, we're going to finish. If there's no Instagram, we're going to finish. If there's no YouTube, we're going to finish. All you need is a copy of God's Word. Now, it'll be a little bit harder to do that, but all things are possible with God. So, remember, you know, the cheers of the crowd is what gets people going, gets a runner to finish the race. So, Hebrews 12.1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You're not alone in the race with God, and your faith in God is a foundation to your victory. Faith is a belief in. Faithful is when times are good or bad, you stay the course. Faith is reminding yourself God is real and alive. Faith is acting upon faith. That is called being faithful. So deal with the sin that so easily wants to entangle you because that's exactly what Satan wants. And untangle yourself through faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. What causes people not to quit is their determination to finish by faith. They themselves will keep going forward despite what others say, how much pain they're in, or whatever is around them, because they can see beyond the trees. And my prayer for you this morning is that you're going to be able to see beyond the trees, and you're going to be able to hear the words Jesus Christ said, it is finished. He did that on the cross. You can do it in your life with him by faith. When the announcer speaks over the PA to the crowd, stating the people who finish, I could see it in heaven of the names of people who finish, and God putting on the big PA and announcing, Good, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I mean, there's going to be a lot of cheering going on that day, and it's going to be worth it. Second Timothy chapter 4, 
verses 7 through 8. Paul's final words. Paul did a lot of stuff. He was on ships. Uh, he preached the gospel. He traveled all over the Middle Eastern area and the Mediterranean Sea. He was bit by a snake. He was put in jail. He wrote most of the New Testament. He went before all kinds of government leaders. He had a life blinded on the road to Damascus. And then he was healed three days later. I mean, this guy done it all, seen it all. This is what he writes. <clears throat> I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Notice that. He fought a good fight, finished the race, kept the faith. Now there's in store for me the crown of righteousness. That's right standing with God. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only to me, but to also all who long for his appearance. So he's saying there, I fought a fight, I finished the race, I kept the faith, I've been right with God, and now I am longing for his appearing. That's the reward I got, and that's what you can get as well. This church has work to do. First Assembly of God, Hannibal, Missouri. We have remodeling that we're still doing, parking lot that we're doing, wall that we want to fix, bathrooms we want to do, ministries that need work, workers, elementary teachers, three-year-old teachers, children's workers, because children need to hear the Lord. And that was something that's been heavy on my heart lately, is that the children's ministry is not getting the gospel because of the COVID-19 thing. I want to change that. That's why I put that children's uh, segment in there, and I'll put some more in there, because I want the children to hear the word too. They are important. Be praying about that, church. Who is going to start another connection group? We need them more than ever before. We need connection groups. Who's going to take somebody's place whenever we run out of Royal Ranger Commanders? Who's going to run the sound when somebody can't show up? These are all things that we need to uh, think about and pray about. So I want to challenge you with this this morning. Finish the course that you started. And if you haven't started it, you can start today. Do the ABCs of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that the Lord is Jesus Christ died and rose again confess your sins accept them into your heart and if you are a believer finish the course plug in and if you're not plugging in if you're not doing anything in the church now's the time now's the time to do something for God you might be surprised what you can do there's things that I've done in the ministry that I didn't think I would be doing and things that I'm doing now that I didn't think I'd be doing and guess what I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying doing it so let's pray together right now and and let's just believe that whatever part of this message that you've heard will touch you, minister to you, and cause you to think, rethink some of the direction and purposes of your life. Be a finisher. Amen? So we can all rejoice in heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this beautiful morning that you've given us. And I pray that you'll touch every individual in a mighty and effective way, powerful way. And I pray that you'll minister to every person that is listening right now. And that you'll touch their heart, touch their mind, and touch their soul in Jesus' name. If you're listening right now and you're bowing your head and you've got your eyes shut or maybe they're open, I want you to think about the things that we've talked about. Contact me if you want to on Facebook and uh, let's talk about being finishers. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we're going to give you some more information about <clears throat> meeting back together. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting very, very close to reopening. And uh, we will be giving you information on that and uh, be talking about that. It's too early to talk about it now. And uh, I will be getting the information out after I meet with the board and other various leaders of the church. But we're just as excited as you to rejoin together and to be able to worship the Lord and to be able to uh, put God first in our lives as we always have. God bless you and have a wonderful week.